with the mark of Valraven and the mark of Surt, you may cross the bridge over the River of Knives to Helheim. No, it's dangerous. It's dangerous. Don't open the gate. Don't. She's done it. No one here but me. Not you. Did you think that I would let you go? That you lost me back in the wilds? I will never let you go. You can't get rid of me. I am your shadow. And I will be watching when you draw your last dying gasp. I'm not ready to die. You will be when you see what they did to your dear beloved. Suffering worse than death. 
and you wanted to surrender, abandoned to find peace with the gods. No. The darkness won't allow it. So you will walk into the lair of the beast. Look it in the eye, and you will go to war. This is your mission. This is your quest. There is nothing else left. É, eu como eu não conheço muito da cultura celta, eu conheço mais da cultura viking, eu não sei se elas são a mesma coisa ou parecidas ou são bem distintas. E em relação a essa voz que está falando com ela, provavelmente, provavelmente é parte da psicose, mas eu não entendi exatamente... Eu não sei da, é, qual parte da consciência dela ou da psicose dela essa voz faz parte. Porque algumas eu consigo até entender. Tem as que querem que ela se acovarde, querem. Na verdade não é se acovarde. Tem as que são um instinto de sobrevivência, né? Que é que ela não vá pra frente. Tem aquelas que empurram ela pra frente. Tem as maluquinhas, entre aspas, né? Que ficam perseguindo ela, mas essa voz mais grossa, eu não sei o que, que é. Tá escuro. Every gate you open into darkness brings another chance.
Ai, caraca! Caramba, que legal! Eu tô ficando mais ou menos bom nesse negócio. Acho que aqui, à medida que o jogo tá ficando cada vez mais interessante, tá ficando também, também cada vez mais tenso. Opa, aqui é o X. Onde é que tá o X por aqui? Achei o X. Achei ou não?
However you come to the gold-covered bridge that leads to hell, you may find it guarded by a giantess. She will ask your name. She will ask your lineage. She will ask your business. The Northmen tell of the warrior woman Brynhild, who leapt into fire and rode to hell to join her slave, and is challenged by the giantess. Opa, uma escada, a escada acabou de se formar ali, vamos lá. Aqui. Pode ser descendo, pode ser subindo. Eu vou subir primeiro, já que eu tô aqui. E é aqui mesmo. A ah, ele ali. Possesses large dwelling places in Helheim. Tall are her walls, high are her gates. The name of her dish is hunger. Her knife is famine. On her threshold, all will stumble. Her bed is called sick bed, and her bed hangings are called flames of a funeral pyre. They say she is easy to recognize, half black and half the color of flesh, and her face menacing and grim.
doors opening. What are you doing? You're showing weakness. You're not a warrior. You're a disgrace. The gods will punish you for this. Pick up the sword. Pick it up. Fight the darkness. Fight it. Get up. Get up! Get up and fight! Caraca! Stormy seas and lost souls. She's dreamt of this before. They say dreams are visions of our memories, thoughts, and fears, as seen by our inner eye. But what if each one of us is always dreaming, even when awake, and we only see what our inner eye creates for us? Is this what hell is? A world shaped by Senua's nightmares? Maybe that's why people feared seeing the world through her eyes. Because if you believe that Senua's reality is twisted, you must accept that yours might be too. You fail the gods. You're pathetic. Rotten. Cursed. What were you thinking? Did you really think you could win? So How stupid, stupid can you be? So stupid. Everyone hates yes. her. She's a curse. The shadow hates Look at you. A warrior. Worthless. Weak. Pathetic. Go on. Feel sorry for yourself. Because there's no one left to do that for you. Everywhere. You What's that? Take it. If you're too much of a coward to fight, then end the suffering. Broken and lost. Just Do like it. your sword. Come on. There. Why go on? When you give everything and face that which torments you. Only to find that it is worse than you could have imagined. Why go on? Is it really so weak to ask this? Or are we just so afraid of the honest answer? That we do not dare pose the question. Sometimes the answer lies in a memory. A feeling. Song. It's not real. It's a trick. It's not real. It's real. Listen to it. She can't, can't give up. Did it? It's not like this. It's not real. It's real. It's a trick. Don't trust it. Maybe you're already dead. Who are you? Do you still believe in yourself? Trick, it's in your mind. 
mind. He know he's here. It's in your it's mind. It's real. It's happening. Go towards it. Before she first met him, she was not in a good place. Just a teenager, but not like the others. Barely functioning, she rarely left the house. Her father's inbell made sure of that. Only occasionally did she venture out on her own, collecting firewood and herbs. Errands out in the Orkney Plains. Was her world like this one barren and lonely Northmen tell of a great hero. His name is Sigmund. 
His father's hall was built around a great tree, and one day, Odin comes and thrusts a sword into the tree, a gift to whomever can release it. Many try, but the sword only comes out at Sigmund's touch. His brother-in-law, King Sigir, wants it, but Sigmund refuses it. So King Sigir wants revenge. He invites Sigmund. Death for Sigmund and his brothers seems certain. But the king's wife is Sigmund's sister, and she begs for mercy and implores the king to chain them up instead. He agrees. Not for mercy, though, but because he plans an even more cruel and lingering death. Chained to a tree in the forest that night, a she-wolf comes and devours one of Sigmund's brothers. She returns, ravenous, night after night, until only Sigmund is left. The next day, Sigmund's sister sends a servant with honey to smear on Sigmund's face. But to what end? Well, that night, when the she-wolf appears again, you'll never guess what happens. Espetacular, olha as the she wolf licks the sweet honey from Sigmund's face, he bites the wolf's tongue. The she wolf pulls away, but Sigmund holds on, the chains break, and he is free. After his escape, Sigmund lives like us, hidden in the forest. His enemy, King Sigir, believing him dead, as his sister plots revenge. And for vengeance to succeed, even the great Sigmund needs help. So she sends her sons to him. But their blood is weak and corrupted, and they're put to death by Sigmund. So his sister hatches him. Maneiro. What is she following? You can't even fight. It's just deception. How does he so effortlessly court the world in bliss? If only she could do the same. See the world through eyes anew. And dance with it. 
just like he does. What's your name? Senua. I haven't seen you before. I'm not... I don't leave home much. Oh. Zeno's daughter. I have to go. Wait. Who taught you to fight like that? No one. <laughs> no one? Well, I... I watched you, and... You... Learned all of that from watching me? <laughs> you should become a warrior, you know. Me? I'm Dillian. I'm here for the warrior trials. Just come and watch. And bring your sword. You can't put it into words. That moment when you look into the eyes of the one who's supposed to reassure you. Make you feel safe. It only takes an instant. Fear swallows you before you have a chance to make sense of it. And darkness becomes a part of who you are. But her world changed the day the Northmen took him from her. So no one knows that there's no going back to how things were. That there's nothing to go back to at all. Stay still, stay quiet, hide, don't tell her. Their gods can see into your mind. They will use this power to destroy you. They won't stop me. I can still feel him. Whatever's left of him, they will never let him go. I'm not gonna let him rot here. You're the one rotting here. Leave me alone. You will die here. No. And all your suffering will have been for nothing. Shut up! Eu achei que era o pai dela, ou, ou o mentor dela, na verdade, é o, é o cara que ela ama, caramba! Eu achei massa o jeito que eles se conheceram. Nossa, muito legal, muito legal mesmo. Eu já gostava bastante dessa personagem, tô gostando mais ainda. Sigmund's sister trades ships with the sorcerers, and in disguise, she lies with her own brother. She gives birth to a son named Sinfjotli. After a time, she sends him to the forest to Sigmund. He tests the boy, 
and finds him strong and fearless. And so they go to take their vengeance on King Sigir. But luck is not on their side. They're captured, and Sigir has them buried alive. As Sigmund and Sinfjotli are being buried alive, Sigmund's sister throws an armful of straw into the grave mound. Hidden in the straw is Sigmund's sword, the gift of Odin. They cut their way out of the grave mound and set fire to Sigir's hall. The king burns to death. Sigmund calls to his sister to come out so that she may live and be honored. She does come. Tá, tem que responder os enigmas desses fragmentos aqui. Então vamos lá, vamos começar por esse. I want to tell you a story about a god of the Northmen called Baldur, the second son of Odin. He was beautiful, good and wise. He was fair of feature, he spoke fair words, he gave fair judgments. Light shone from him. Only good things were told of him. Yet he was the first of the gods to die. Tá, eu ouvi uma história sobre Baldur e agora eu tô aqui. Nossa, como tá escuro. Bridge. You've come this far, but the bridge is broken. There's no way you can fix it. What do you do now, Sam?
go near it. Don't go there. Don't go too close. Don't go to the Where are we? What is this? It's the same. It's another world. Que interessante, cara. Olha só. The Northmen tell this story about the death of Baldur. It begins with dark dreams. Night after night, Baldur dreams of his own death, and the gods fear for his life. So Baldur's mother makes everything in the world fire, water, iron, stone, earth, wood, beasts, birds, serpents, poison, sickness swear an oath not to harm her son. One by one, they each make their vow. Neither weapons nor wood will injure him, Baldur's mother boasts. Only Loki, father of Hela, the mistress of death, is not unused. Dillian, there he is. There he is. What are you waiting for? Quick, find a way. Find him. Go through him before he disappears. Dillian, don't lose him. Don't let him slip away too many times. You always let him disappear. Dillian, there he is. Quick. Can you remember what love feels like? Look what happens to the things she loves. She destroys the things she loves. What's important? You're still alive, Dillian. Alive and dead. He's not here. She's in the wrong world. He's not in this world. He's in the other one. He's in the other one. He's in the dark world. The dark. The dark world. The world once seemed so simple. Black and white. Darkness and light. Narrow dividing lines of our own making. Dillian taught her to see further to peek through the cracks and see the worlds of color stretching away from the glow. And Senno explored new paths into the unknown. The gods feast and rejoice and amuse themselves by throwing spears and stones at Baldur, striking at him with sword and axe. But he comes to no harm, whatever they do. The gods never cease to wonder at this great marvel. But Loki shapes himself into a woman and asks Baldur's mother, Is it really true that all things promise to keep him safe? I did not ask the mistletoe, Baldur's mother confesses. I thought it was too young. You can't ask 
Oh dear. He's the reason she's alive at all. He cared in a way that nobody else did. He saw who she could be. He saw who she really was. He saw the warrior within. He was the only one she could trust. Could she trust him? 